Hey everyone, it's Levermang here and welcome to the advanced streaming guide for the Valve Index. We're going to be talking about some of the problems that the Index has with streaming and how to fix them and how to do a few other cool things as well. But we will be picking up exactly where we left off from the last video. So if you haven't seen that one already, which was the, the general Steam VR streaming guide, go watch that first and then come back to this one. Okay, so here we are back over at OBS, as you can see, exactly where we left off. We have the OpenVR capture, which is scaled to fill the screen nicely. However, there is one issue with this that the Valve Index has, which I will just get in the headset and demonstrate. So because of the Index's wider field of view, the left and right eye images don't overlap quite as much as they would on a normal VR headset. It's one of the little tricks they use to make the wider field of view work. However, when you go to record video, it can look a bit odd. So if I were to grab this gun, pull it up, look down the sights. As you can see, the gun is way over to the left of the screen. It looks a little bit wacky, doesn't look that good for footage, so it's a bit of a problem, and we're going to talk about how to fix it. So the way to fix this isn't really that hard, but first I want to give a shout out to Rubaz, who was the one who came up with this idea, as far as I know. He posted about it on Reddit like last year, which is where I saw the idea. I implemented it in my own way and yeah so shout out to him link down below in description is another really cool VR creator so definitely go check him out but what this idea is is that instead of just capturing the right eye what if you took the right eye and the left eye and then blended them together so you got like a super wide field of view so that's what we're going to do and it's really simple to do so Let's start by taking the open VR capture that we have and we're going to rename it to right eye. Because once we've got two of those floating around, it's going to get a bit confusing if we don't name them properly. So we have the right eye. Let's go ahead, go to transform and let's reset it. So now it's back to its original size. And then let's go ahead and add a second one. We're going to call this one left eye. Untick, capture right eye. So now we've got the left eye. Okay, so now we have both eyes. We have the left eye and we have the right eye. Let's go ahead and move the left eye underneath the right. Because we're about to put an image mask onto the right eye. And to do that, we're going to right click, go to filters. Under filters, we're going to add an image mask slash blend. And what this is going to do is we're going to put a black and white image into here. And that'll tell us which parts of the right eye to keep and which parts to make transparent. So we can show the left eye underneath. So we can blend them both together. Alright, I've applied my mask. As you can see, all this is grey now because now it's transparent. Now, this image mask, I'll leave a link to that in the description so you can download it for yourself. So as you can see now, you can start to see the left eye coming through underneath. However, these two do not match up at all. So. We're going to have to space them apart so that it starts to look like one big single image. So let's take this right eye and we'll start dragging it across. As you can see, yeah, we've got a really nice and smooth blend. Uh, as you can see, I have gone way too far just to show you where things match up. So let's bring this back a bit. And to start off with, let's just make it line up like that. That's starting to look nice, however, we will adjust that in a second. Because the next thing that we want to do is we want to take these two images, right click again, and we're going to group them. Uh, we'll just call that OpenVR. So, what grouping allows us to do is that it treats both of those two sources as one single source, which means that I can resize that, drag it around, and uh, yeah, as you can see, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. However, we do need to make a few changes. So the main issue with trying to blend these two things is that because left and right eyes are slightly offset, just overlapping them kind of looks a little bit wacky when you've got objects at different depths. So if I were to move this around, and I was to go over the hands, or you can even see on the background, you can see that blend, you can see... Yeah, there we go, now we can see it. You can kind of tell where they overlap. 
Uh, and we're gonna fix this. Oh, that 10 in the background? You can... Oh, it's behind my webcam. No, you can't see it. There we go. You can see that masking, that blending a little bit better now. So, we're gonna make a quick change to this. And let me move myself over. Doot, doot. So I generally find that this this masking, the the seam, is a lot more noticeable on objects in the distance than objects in front of you. Like, I mean, it looks pretty bad on the hand there. But once you're playing, your hands aren't really going to be crossing over too much. It's more noticeable when the distance doesn't line up. So, let's grab an object in the distance, like this little pillar right here is looking pretty good. And we're going to line up the two images off of that. Now, I believe that pillar is like a good 20 meters out. I think that's what the wall is saying. So that's what I'll usually do, is that I will pick an object 15 to 20 meters away and use that to line up the two images. So, right eye, right click, edit the transform. So then we can just edit the horizontal position manually. There we go. That's looking pretty good. So as you can see, things in the distance do line up a bit better. Things closer, not quite as much, but this will depend on what kind of game you're playing. For a first person shooter, when most of what you're going to be looking at is 10 to 20 meters away, it's not that noticeable. I'll chuck some footage up in a second and you'll be able to see this in action and you'll be able to see for yourself just how good it looks. However, if you are playing another game like, say for example, Job Simulator, something that's a little bit closer scale, you can just go ahead and adjust this distance to make things line up. So this is something you can adjust depending on the scale of game that you're playing so you can play around with it. But now that we have that lined up, we're going to take this group again. Actually, let's lock these two sources. So now I can't accidentally drag them around and split them apart. And now we've just got this one big open VR source. And let's scale this to fit properly. Once again, we want to make sure we don't have any of those black borders showing. So, oops, let's scale it. There we go. Now that's looking pretty good. That's looking much, much better than just having the one eye on its own. And actually, little fun tip is that you can mask the seam even better by just straight up putting your webcam over the top of it. So, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of not quite as noticeable now. All right, so now if I jump back into the headset, I pull out my gun again and I bring this up, you'll notice that it's a lot more centered. It looks a whole lot better than having just the right eye on its own. However, what you might find once you actually start recording gameplay with it, you might start to find that maybe it's a little bit too much field of view. Maybe we are zoomed out, maybe we're actually capturing a bit too much. I may not be entirely correct about this, but because the, the field of view of the index is about 120 degrees, it means that this here is probably about 120 degrees as well. I haven't quite done the math on it yet, so I might be wrong, but it is pretty zoomed out. So this probably comes down more to style, which is like, if you don't want it that zoomed out, pretty easy to fix. Just grab this, the source, and make it bigger. Boom. It's pretty easy to work with. So you can just go to transform, edit the transform. From here, you can see the size that you're working with. Uh, let's have a look. I normally work with something about this size, I think. However, I will be playing around with the field of view and I'm probably going to go for something wider. I do find that works better for first person shooters with lots of like 
fast moving head movements. Again, it depends on the game. Something you have to play around with. Something that, yeah, once you know how to do it for yourself, it's pretty easy to try and figure out what works for you. And then let's, for comparison's sake, let's load up a, a game capture of Pavlov Game Window as well, just to compare things like we did in the last video. There we go. Okay, so that's Pavlov as the game window is captured. That's what you get from the left eye only. That's our view. We can see a whole lot more and everything's centered properly. So there we go again, Pavlov game window, our combined left and right eyes. So yeah, there you have it. It's really not that complicated once you get into it. It just sounds complicated when you say it out loud, but it's really not that hard to do. Hopefully this video has helped you out with that. Hopefully you'll be able to get some pretty cool looking Valve Index footage out of this. But without further ado, let's get some gameplay footage up and see how it looks in action. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, hope you guys found it helpful. If you did, consider subscribing because uh, subscribers are nice to have. They're very nice. I'm a very materialistic person and I want things and those things are subscribers. So if you could help me out, that'd be great. Thanks. And as always, I'll see you all in the next one.